It's your open source advocate and I'm back with another video and today we're going to talk about XPipe. Now I've covered XPipe in the past about a year or a little bit more than a year ago and it has gotten tons of improvements since then. XPipe is an absolutely incredible connection manager. If you need to connect to your servers, to your home machines, to your desktops, to whatever it is, this is there to help you manage those connection points. It will open up your terminal and get you connected through SSH. It will open up a VNC session or an RDP session. It is just a really incredible tool and it helps you figure out and set up those connections. So I'm going to show you that in the video today as well. It's really an amazing, amazing tool. And if you haven't looked at it, you definitely should. Now, as with anything, this is an open source project. There's a community featured project that you can get and use at no cost. It is absolutely awesome, but he does have some pricing to help support the continued development of this software. And it's really important if you like this tool, if you want to use this tool, that you get out there and try to help him support it. He's got a home lab license that I think is absolutely amazing. $40 a year if you pay it for the year. If you just pay the whole year up front, it's $40. Now you go divide that by 12, that's less than $4 a month, okay? That is absolutely an incredible value. Now if you wanna go monthly, if you're like, I don't have 40 bucks right now, it's almost Christmas time, I totally get it. But you can go out and you can do this for $5 a month and you're supporting the project. You're helping him keep this project going, which is absolutely awesome. This is not a sponsored video. I am not being paid by the XPipe developer. I am not getting anything for it other than just giving you guys some really great software that is open source and just super useful. I use XPipe. I've used it since I showed you the first video. It is absolutely great for connecting to all my services and all my devices, and it makes it really easy for me to do that. Now, there's several different ways that you can install XPipe, so we'll just go quickly over to the downloads page. I want to show you kind of how you can do this. If you use Windows, you've got an MSI installer. Now, if you're using the MSI, you might have to have admin privileges on that Windows machine to install this, so just be aware of that. But you've also got Linux. You've got .deb, you've got .rpm, you've got macOS package installers as well. Now, if you don't have permissions to install things on your Windows machine or one of these other machines, for instance, there's also portable installations. So you can get over there and get that Windows.zip portable. You can get the Linux tar.gz portable. You can get the Linux app image portable, which is awesome as well. I've used that one. I'm using the deb right now just because it gets updated when I update my, my other software, but the app image is really, really awesome as well. You've got the macOS.dmg portables as well. So you've got a lot of really, really cool ways to get this installed and get it set up. So just be aware of that. And I'll have links in the show notes and the description for XPipe. That way you guys can get out there and get it and use it as well. We're getting into the video right after this, but I just want to say thank you so very much to all of my patrons over at Patreon. I cannot tell you how much it means that you want to support my content every month. It just, it means the world to me. It, it just means so much that you enjoy the content and you get enough out of the content that you want to help me continue making that content. I, I just can't say thank you. To all the people who do buy me a coffee or buy me a beer through PayPal, uh, man, it just brightens up my day when I see one of those come through. Uh, again, I just can't say thank you enough for that. It is such a huge lift, you know, just to pick me up to see that come through or to see a message come through from Patreon or to see anything come through from any of you guys is always great. To all my subscribers, thank you so much. I love the comments. I love the positive feedback. I love anything where you're helping me do better. I, I appreciate that more than I could ever tell you. If you're not a Patreon member and you want to become one, also know that I put a ad-free version directly on Patreon so that you can watch it there without any ads. If you're watching on YouTube, you're probably going to see some ads. I don't have a lot of control over what ads you see, so I apologize if you see something weird or crazy. I don't know what Google puts on there. But, you know, definitely if you want an ad-free version, check out Patreon. I mean, as little as a dollar a month could get you on there where you can see the ad-free versions, and it helps support me in the continuation of the content. Once more, thank you all so very much. Now let's get into XPipe. If I'm an IT person, I'm sitting here thinking, oh my gosh, this is the thing I've been needing. It lets you do all kinds of really cool stuff. We're looking at their website here, but I'm gonna open up the actual application. If we just start over here on the, on the right nav bar, normally it's, you'd see stuff on the left. It's over here on the right, but this, this little link here is where we're at, and you can see some of the machines that I've already set up, and this is just me doing some testing and, and trying some things out because there's been a ton of innovation and a ton of additions since this came out. And I want to say this up front. This developer is absolutely amazing. He made this, and I covered this a little over a year ago, maybe. I don't remember. 
exactly, but I was really blown away even then by what it could do. And I covered it and I had a few people comment on it and then I finally had a user say, hey, I tried this but it keeps freezing or it keeps locking up or it keeps crashing on my system. So I just suggested, you know, go over and create an issue on GitHub and he did and it was fixed like the next day. I mean, that is the power of open source. He went and created an issue, the developer saw it and said, oh wow, let me get some more details and he fixed that problem. That's amazing. So that user is now having a much better experience because of that. So while I was testing this, I, I kind of came across some weird things where I had questions. So I emailed the developer and he's really cool. He emailed me right back and he's like, oh yeah, I see that problem, hang on. And he built a new version where he had already fixed the issue I was seeing. And I went over and I got the new version from the settings. So if you, if you go over here, you can see there's a bunch of stuff, but here's a settings panel right here. So if you click into the settings, you can see whether or not there are new updates. So this is the one I think that I'm on. Uh, yeah, so it's got 14, two and three. So you can see what he's updated and what he's changed in these things. And he did make these Proxmox VNC changes based on my request because the wording was a little bit odd. It wasn't doing anything different. He's not making it do something different. It was just worded oddly so that I wasn't sure what it was doing. Um, so yeah, he made some really great changes here and, and he's very just responsive, which is awesome. I can't say that he's always going to be that responsive, but he, he really tries to be. So when you go to update, it pops open your terminal. You put in your super user password here so that it can do the actual update. It's going to go out, pull down the latest version that he's got built and get that installed in your system. So we're just going to wait for that to happen here. And it popped up on the other screen, but it also pops up like, here's your what's new whenever it's done. So you can just say, okay. And now I'm right back into the system. Um, I think if I kill that, it's fine. Yeah, so it's like, it's cool. You can just close this window. You don't have to, it doesn't end your program or anything like that. Now, what you can see here is I've added several different kinds of things. So I've got a remote desktop connection here. Super easy. I went in and added a remote desktop connection. So he just, and, and you need, Again, this is not a remote desktop client. This is a connection management system. So it's gonna use Remina to do the remote desktop for me, but it's gonna tell Remina like, hey, here's the remote desktop information. You need to pop this open and, and start doing your remote desktop thing. So this is super easy, super awesome, and I love it. And I do this over a VPN, which makes it even better whenever I'm doing like a client machine. Down here, I've got my Navidrome server. This is actually a Incas container running on a host server. So if I want to get onto that Incas container, it's just got a text terminal based interface, but I can just click and it's going to open up and I'm right into my server. And this is actually called Dashy, but it's got a lot of things in here. So if I do Docker and I show you, so I've actually got Dashy, Authentic, Mesh Central, and Navidrome all running on this little Incas server, which is really awesome. And it's a really easy way to keep those guys running, but they're running in Docker inside of that Incas container. So they're actually running on a physical server inside of a container, inside of another containerization system, which is great. Um, so again, if you exit, it's gonna tell you, hey, it's cool, you can just close this window. And I close it out and I'm back to here, but I can also connect to the actual host machine here. So if I do that, I can see all of the host machine stuff that's going on and I can do Incas list. And again, you can see my different Incas containers that are running inside of there. And there's that Dashy container that we were just connected to. So I could go through and just connect to all of these. Now, he has something that picks up LXC and LXD containers. He's not picking up Incas containers yet, but I'm hopeful that in the near future, he's gonna add that so that I don't even have to go add these manually. It'll just pick up like, hey, this host system seems to have a bunch of containers. You wanna connect to them, let's do it. I, I'm super excited. I, I know that's gonna come eventually. I, he's got a lot on his plate, so I'm not, not pushing for it to be done anytime soon, but it's gonna be awesome when it gets there. And the cool thing is Incas is very much like LXD, it's just a fork of LXD. So hopefully it won't take a lot of work since he already seems to support LXD containers anyways. Now, all of that said, there's a lot of different ways to do this, but the cool thing is you get this nice kind of, I can con collect things up over here on the side. So here I've got my Incas host. So that's just that one machine. Um, here I can say, here's my server host. I don't have any server hosts to set up in that group right now, but I can set up server hosts and add them to that group. I've got my default group, which has a bunch of my, my stuff here. And then I've got my uh, my client group here that, that does things for a client that I have. So I've got a lot of different things and, and you can add groups very easily. You just right click 
and then say create a new subcategory on this top level category and then you can add things to it you can move, pull things out of it and things can be in multiple categories so it's a really great way to organize all of the things that you're trying to connect to um, so I, I really like that now if you add subcategories under each one of these then they'll expand and so on now over here you've got some really cool stuff as well so you've kind of got this browser system i guess is the best way to put it now you can see i, I connected to the proxmox server uh, i was moving some files around and i was working on them uh, doing some things and uh, it was really easy to do it from here which was great but i can just change this and i can go to inca's hosts and I can see Navidrome here and you see it pulls it up in a file folder layout for me. So here I can see what's going on. Uh, I can see my common folders, but then I can also see like here's my root folder if I need to get to it. And then here I can see like here's home, Brian, here's home and it kind of works its way up into the common ones. What happens is you get a lot of things like logs in your var folder. So you might want to go to log because you're trying to find some logs or something. And you're like, hey, I've been having this issue and they ask you for logs. This is a really great way to get to it in a visual way instead of having to use terminal and command line commands. So if you're not a terminal command line guru, maybe this is a little bit easier way for you to do that. And that's this second icon over here. And then, of course, you get to the settings icon. And there's a few other things down here that you can check out. He's got links to his GitHub, his Discord if you have questions. I mean, just so many really awesome awesome things but uh, this is the place where I kind of like to live just because it makes things easier so what I want to do is I want to go through adding a system for you guys so I'm just gonna go in here I'm gonna say new and I'm gonna add a remote host here and it's gonna be through SSH and this is gonna be a Proxmox server that I've got set up here at my house and I'll kind of show it to you real quick before we add it um, so I've got this Proxmox server you can see it's using up a good bit of the RAM it's only got 8 gigs so I'm gonna add some more to it but I've got a couple of VMs set up on it here. Um, I've got this one for uh, Ubuntu Mate, and I've got a separate one here uh, for uh, Zorin OS. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add this system, which if you look, you know, I'm, I'm getting into those consoles right here through a web VNC that uh, Proxmox has built in. It's fine, and you can do this, but if you have a lot of Proxmox servers and you haven't clustered them in things, you have different things you're opening up to get to there. X-Pipe could be that thing that glues everything together for you. So I wanted to show you kind of how that works. So I'm going to go down here. I'm going to click. I'm going to go back to here. I'm going to say click. Let's uh, let's add a new host. So we're going to say a new SSH connection. And I'm going to add that host IP address. Now this is just on my local network. Uh, I'll put in my username for that system. And then down here it wants to know do you have keys do you use a gateway do you you know how do you connect to this so i'm going to say here what kind of password authentication is it you need to fill this in so make sure you do if you have none then put none it's okay if you're using a key go down here and pick the key that you're using if you're not using a key put none but in my case it's password so then it'll expose another field and i'll put in my super secret password there and then down here, you've got a few other options that you can select, but you need to give it a connection name. That's one more thing you need to give it. So I'm going to call this um, just uh, TM Prox Mox. Just, it's just a way to identify it in your list of machines. You can have a really much better way of doing this than what I'm doing, but definitely you, you need to give it that name. So it's going to go out and it's going to make that connection. First thing it's going to do is try to see like, oh, and it's not my name. What am I doing? Uh, this is Proxmox. So I haven't added myself as a user on it yet. It's root. Sorry. Um, so it griped at me because it couldn't connect with that username. So we're going to try again. There it goes. It's going to pop up and it's going to go say, it's going to say like, hey, I see these things on this machine. Do you want to add them? So there's Proxmox PVE. Yes, I want to do that. SSH config files. Yes, I want to do that. You know, any of these things that it has, do you want to connect? And it's got VNC connections. Yes, I want to put those. So I'm just going to click on go. It's going to add that. And here it is right here. So it's TM Proxmox. It expanded it for me already. And here I've got my shell environment and my dash and my bash. So I've got a few things that it picked up on right away. There now. Yeah, so we'd copy the URL and then we could go out to a web link to open that one up. So nothing we have to do there. Services that are running. But here we've got those two virtual machines. Now, right now, if I click, it's going to ask me like, hey, what are the details for this virtual machine? Instead of trying to type that in manually, he's got this really great thing. So if you go over here to this little square and click, you get this pop up menu right here. You can say enable VNC access. I want to show you this because it's important. This is a community version and you can do one Proxmox host with the community version, which has no fees. No, it doesn't cost you anything, but it does want you to get a home lab license, which I think is $5 a month. 
okay? And it lets you have multiple Proxmox nodes at that point. So if you have a bigger home lab where you want to run these things, this just helps support the project. It really helps support him doing this work. And like I said, he is super responsive, so I really like that. And again, if we don't support the open source tools that we love, they're not gonna stay. They're gonna be gone. So just keep that in mind. Whenever you do this, you're gonna see these things come up um, depending on what you're trying to do. So there's different plans, but the home lab plan is is pretty great. So let's go, let's go sign up for that. So that opened up here, and again, you can see his community plan, his home lab plan, his professional plan, which is still only $10 a month, but if you do it yearly, it's $80 a year. I wanna point out a little math here. $5 a month, five times 12 is 60. That's $60 a year. But if you pay it yearly, it's 40. So you're getting this for a third off, 33% off. That's pretty amazing. If you're an enterprise and you like this tool and you're like, I want all my guys to have access to this, you can you can talk to them about pricing. Don't sweat that, okay? So I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna say upgrade. And it's the X-Pipe Home Lab. I'm sorry, this is very bright. Um, but yeah, so we're gonna put in our information and I'll put in my card stuff here in just a second. All right, so I'm gonna pay for this. It's gonna end up being $43.20 after tax. So we'll just hit the little pay button there. All right, so just enter the key in the license tab in the XPipe application and you're good to go, okay. All right, enter my license key and I'm going to activate. It says your license was successfully activated, awesome. So we've supported a project. So we have to restart XPipe. All right, so we're back in and we've added that proxy. Let's go here and let's do enable VNC access again. So it just says, do you want to enable VNC access for this VM? And this is where the, the odd uh, wording was at because it was like, hey, we're gonna install something. I was like, no, I don't want to install things in the VM. It's actually just gonna update the VNC config file on Proxmox so that we can actually access it. So we're just gonna say, okay. So it added that for us and we can see right here that we've got it and it set display 99. So we're just gonna click on go. And you can see here's my Zorin VM. It's coming up in the XPipe window, which is cool. There we go. We've got Zorin up and running. We can open up Firefox just to show you that it is running in here. And this is the first time I've run Firefox on this VM. So it's gonna come up with all of the standard Firefox stuff which is fine, we can close that tab and then we can open up some other tab here and there's our standard Firefox tab, all right. So everything is working in our VM. We can access our VM, we can go here and we can see our overview, so really not bad at all. When we're done, we can just close this tab right here. There we go. And we can go back up over here at the top and I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller again. We don't need full screen for everything, but you can see how this works. So that's a quick overview of XPipe. I think it's an absolutely tremendous, tremendous tool. It is really, really awesome. And again, super great responses from the developer when there's problems. I hope you guys will get out there and give it a shot. I think you'll really like it. It's a really great way to stay connected to all your devices and all your services and a really great way to keep them organized. Believe me, as your home lab grows, you're gonna want something to help you keep everything organized and make it easy to get connected and do things. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, like, subscribe, Tell your friends about it so they can come along in the open source journey with us, and I'll talk to you next time.